What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're gonna look at coffee shots, a really weird way to create a coffee beverage with an espresso machine that's not really espresso. All right, so what is the inception of the coffee shop? Or what, what is a coffee shot first, I guess I should say. A coffee shot, what I'm referring to when I say that, and what you saw in the B-roll, is essentially a cup of coffee that you create using an espresso machine that is the same size as something like a cup of filter coffee, like a pour over or a cup of drip coffee. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how this is made, what the inception was, and kind of where it's going today because this style of pulling coffee has sprouted legs. But first, let's go to the very beginning, because it's a very good place to start. Like one, two, three, do, re, mi, a, b, c. Okay, so let's go back to 1946, or 1948, actually. Gaja created the first lever machine that was capable of creating nine bar of pressure. Now, when this happened, 30 milliliters of espresso was all that was really sensible to make, right? So people were getting really used to this very concentrated 30 milliliter beverage that they became obsessed with. And there was a cult-like following behind this style of pulling espresso. But then in 1961, when Faima came through and created the first pump espresso machine that was capable of replicating what Gaja did on the manual lever machine, people wanted to keep, wanted to continue with that small, short, concentrated pungent shot of espresso and so people continue to pull shots like that until about the 80s when on the border of uh, around switzerland germany italy northern italy people started to pull what was referred to as cafe crema all right so you may have heard of this before it's now has a lot of different meanings but that original meaning was a shot, a shot of coffee that was pulled a lot longer to give you that larger beverage size of something like a drip coffee, but giving you it from an espresso machine. So it's utilizing the consistency of a, an espresso machine to create drip coffee. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why, why don't you just make a long black or an Americano, take some espresso with the traditional style and douse it with water? Well, let's think about it. There's a big difference there in the brew style. With a two ounce shot of espresso, a 30, 60 milliliter um, shot of espresso, you have a very concentrated extraction, all right, that's taking over 30 seconds or so, and then you're diluting it with water. Whereas the other, you have water running through the puck the whole time. Two completely different extractions, two completely different grind sizes, two completely different end goals in mind. So, in the 80s, this was a very popular drink out there, and apparently, uh, and I'll link my sources that I'm getting this information from below, I'm not just blowing smoke, but Apparently in the 80s, it was adopted in Australia as well, but it was quickly abandoned and replaced with the long black. But it, 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 supposedly, this is still the most popular drink in Switzerland, which is curious because so many people haven't heard of this. Now, there are a couple of shops in America, in the United States of America, that are using these types of shots or variations of them today in their cafes to replace drip coffee. One, in the, for example, and I'll link the article below, is Hex Coffee. They have been doing this since 2017 or maybe before. That's when the article is dated that I've linked below. But there are people who have been doing these style of shots for quite a while. Now, they rose to global prominence, at least in my perception, once Matt Perger in the 2013 World Barista Championship pulled what he called coffee shots. And I have a, a flyer that I believe he helped create, but it definitely is attributed to him down below on how to make these coffee shots the way that he did it in the championship. So... There are all these different styles of, of pulling these shots, and that original one was essentially using a stock nine bar espresso machine, having the grounds coarser, and then pulling a shot in 25 to 30 seconds that had around a one to 10 ratio, okay? So what you had was a 30 second shot that was just running through at that high flow rate, whatever the flow rate of your machine was, whatever the water debit is that's set, it was just running through those grounds in 30 seconds, giving you a full cup of coffee. Over the years, it's gone through evolution, just like all these drinks have. And it came up to, with Matt Perger, it, it turned into something that was able to increase extraction to about 24%. He said to hit around a 1.35 TDS and 24% extraction yield. And he ag advocated for using the EK43 grinder with better grinder, and using these types of shots, you can really, and what he said was, you can uh, get these juicy, sweet, vibrant 
cups of coffee that manual brew methods just could not replicate. So uh, after that, people, especially on the home forums, were getting really into these styles of shots. And nowadays, it has turned into what is referred to as the Sprover or the Spro Over. So espresso and pour over together in holy matrimony, marriage. So what you have now is this thing called a Spro Over. Now this, and I'll, I'll link below the Discord uh, that I have chats with some people to name a few, uh, P-Web, Shotwell, Fam. Um, but I, I'm going to link below this Discord and their profiling guide. But I've been talking with some of them about these styles of shots and about their inceptions. And they have you know, given me some nice articles and whatnot on which I've ed educated myself. But the direction this style of shot is taken now are, is, is a lot more intense. Um, you're looking now at the flow rate, so the water debit that's going into the puck and manipulating that in order to increase the perception of clarity and in order to enhance the extraction. You have um, more specific grind settings and different instructions on how you should do different beans uh, based off of your water debit in your machine. So while you can do the, the, that old school cafe crema on any machine regardless of the water debit, What's going on now and what I want to focus on with this video is the modern iteration of that Cafe Crema, which is the Sprover, okay? So today I'll be using the Breville Dual Boiler. All right, this is my uh, camera guy's uh, new machine, and so I'm going to break it in on, on YouTube for everyone. But it's stock, no modifications made. This is not my machine, even though I have a black one as well. Mine's completely tricked out. This one, stock. What I've done is I went to the menu, hit both arrows at the same time, and I changed the pre-infusion down to the lowest setting, which I have found the water debit to be about three grams per second. It's gonna vary from machine to machine, from voltage to voltage, from uh, the, the life of the machine to the life of the machine. So anyway, it has about a three uh, mill milliliter per second water debit, and then I set the pre-infusion time to 90 seconds. So the full shot that I'm about to run will be in pre-infusion mode the whole time, because 90 seconds is what times out on this specific machine and it's gonna be at a three milliliter a second water debit. And what I'm going to be aiming for is a shot from 60 to 90 seconds that is going to give me a yield of about, uh, 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 that's gonna give me about a 24, 25% extraction yield. And I'm going to be brewing a coffee that I have not pulled these on yet um, because I wanted to kind of walk through it with you on this video. So um, one of my patrons sent me this coffee from Gravitas. It's a washed Ethiopia. Uh, I've cupped it once, um, and so that's, what, that's why it's so cool. And so we're gonna throw this on uh, and, and dial it in on this video. But just so you know, most any machine out there can be modded to, in order to control the flow a little bit. So if you have uh, something, something with an Olka pump, for instance, and you don't have the capability of running pre-infusion shots uh, with a stock machine, you can do uh, what, what's called the dimmer mod, which I have shown in the Gaja Classic Pro video linked right there. So w with conceiving of this, just think about that turbo shot video I did. Again, I'm linking there. Uh, this is kind of pushing that even further. So using the coarser grounds and doing a light tamp and allowing that water to go through essentially using a no bypass brewer. There's no bypass that can be allowed in a porta filter in a basket. Doing that, you're just kind of pushing it to the extremes. You've been doing a bigger shot of coffee, which turns into something in between espresso and filter coffee. Should be sitting around a 2.3, 2.4 TDS and around a 24, 25, 26% extraction. And finally, before I start, I just want to say your grinder is also also can increase your extraction, but it's a very forgiving brew, and you're going to be able to hit extraction yields even with a less than ideal grinder with this style. Now today I'm using a modded Vario, which I'll be doing a video on soon enough. So if you have questions about that, this is Vario with Forte parts, and this is just a bellows from something on Amazon. Anyway, all right, let's get started. So I'm gonna take my porta filter. I have my machine set to 195 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 90 Celsius. All right, so I want a little lower temperature, and the reason for that is because you're losing a lot less temperature when brewing espresso than when doing a pour over. And it's concentrated, it's hitting it immediately, so you're not losing as much as you do with pour over. So this is gonna be a, an incredibly hot brew water, so I wanna lower the temp. You can even go lower than that, but I found some good, uh, some good shots at 195 or 90 Celsius. All right, so I have my coffee ground, and then I'm going to treat it just like any other shot of espresso. I got my shot collar on, dumping the grounds into the porta filter. I'm gonna take my WDT, which I'll link the 3D file 
for this tool below. All right, so I'm WDTing it, and then I'm going to tamp it just somewhat lightly. That's uh, on the recommendation of Matt Perger from his from his routine. He he conjectures that it gives a more even saturation of the puck when you tamp lightly. So I'm just going to make sure it's level and tamp, and you can see just how coarse this is, especially with how much chaff there is. Normally, when you grind for espresso, you're grinding so finely that you're not going to see much chaff. This is quite coarse. Um, for people who are uh, using the Vario and have it to the stock calibration, I'm on a 4M, just for, yeah, for your knowledge. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull this shot, and I will show you, using my Smart Espresso Profiler app, what this is going to look like. And we're going to start this at the same time. All right, so we got the pre-infusion happening and now we have the water running out. And so the water debit again is about three milliliters a second. And as you, if you're looking, if you're able to see right here, we have it, uh, the output right now is at about 1.5, but it'll raise up a little bit as that water continues to wash through the grounds. So we're aiming for around a 90 second shot, uh, anywhere from like 60 to 90 seconds. But there's a lot of variation in how people prefer pulling these shots. As you're seeing, it doesn't look very pretty. It doesn't look like espresso because we're not getting as much emulsification. So you see the pressure is just around one bar uh, because we're not pushing through at, in a, through a fine grind setting. So because flow times resistance equals pressure, we're not giving much resistance. So the flow going through cannot build that pressure. So we're, about, uh, we're past halfway on our extraction at about 60 seconds as of now. We're gonna just continue to go. about 100 grams in, and I did a 15 gram dose, just so you all know. All right, so we've equalized out at about 1.75 output flow, and we are gonna hit this right on the money, it looks like. All right, so the, the dual boiler has a 90 second uh, maximum shot time. This came out at 142 grams, so almost right at our intended shot. Now, to prove to you how high of an extraction this is, I did bring my Atago. So we're going to get my measuring kit. All right, so that's cooling down. Let's go ahead and take a sip of this. So uh, again, the, the kind of target with this new Sprover type of way of pulling shots that's much longer with a lower flow rate than kind of the initial uh, inception of this style of shot making. Uh, this one, you're going to slow that flow down, you're going to increase the shot time, increase the contact time, lower the temperature. This is going to give you high extraction with high perceptible clarity and a really nice sweet acidity. Uh, and it's just, it, it's a really unique style of making espresso. So we're going to, so again, this is a washed Ethiopia coffee. That tastes very similar to filter. It's a stronger filter that has a little more body because it's going through this porta filter with the metal basket. Now, what I, the way that I think of this, if you're still confused by what's going on here, the way I like to think about it is what's going on is essentially an air press in the sense that you're getting about one bar of pressure. So when you're doing an air press, you're getting, you're attaining about one bar of pressure. So you have an air press, but not immersion. It's like a percolation air press in a way because you have fresh water consistently going over the puck and throughout that whole time it's pushing the water the water column through the puck of, of, a, of coffee okay so instead of it sitting like in an air press and then pushing you have it constantly going through with fresh water so that in extraction just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing and the temperature isn't really dipping depending on your machine uh, the temperature stability in the breville dual boiler is incredible so you're essentially getting high temperature throughout that whole shot. So you're replenishing the brew water with fresh brew water every second that's at a high temperature. So you're really extracting through the roof and we're about to see that here in a second and I'll calculate the, um, the um, extraction yield. All right, we've let that sample cool. Now I'm gonna get it and just give a, put a couple of drops onto the dish. Less drops is best. All right, so I put the magic on there which I also clean vigorously and I'm hitting start. Let's see where this is at. Yeah, 2.42, it looks like it's gonna equalize at 2.42. So let's do, all right, so that was a 22.75 extraction yield. 
All right, so we can definitely do higher. I can go gr finer on the grind size. It wasn't building up as much pressure as normal. Again, this was my first shot with this coffee. So um, yeah, can easily do higher. So uh, let's go ahead and pull one more. I'm gonna go finer on the grind si setting. We're gonna do one more uh, with the 15 gram dose. And this is in a 20 gram basket. Uh, while I'm speaking of that, it's important to note that you're going to want to underdose as far as the number because the coarser you go with your grounds, the more space that's going to take up. Even though I am underdosing by about five grams, it, it's filled up pretty well because of course I'm grinding. Okay, we're going to do one more shot. I'm going to use a different pipette for that. All right, and we will measure one more. However, this is really good. All right, so I've got this second shot prepped. I'm gonna do a little light tamp on it. I moved the grind size finer. I went up to 4A. So I moved it pretty fine on the micro adjustment uh, to, to uh, hopefully increase that TDS just a bit. I'm gonna put my cup underneath, zero out the scale, and we'll go ahead and pull out the profiler again. All right, so we're gonna start the shot. I'm at 195 or nine degrees Celsius and uh, at the 55% pre-infusion for a 90 second shot and we're starting it. All right, so as you see, we're rising up. We're at about, so this time we have a higher flow rate. We're at about two. Let's see where we equalize. All right, it looks like we're gonna equalize right around two milliliters a second. All right, so let's set that there. All right. Now these are very forgiving. As I said, this first one that I pulled is actually quite tasty. I'm very happy with it actually. Um, like, wow, it's incredible. Something that you can do to clean up your shot, and I brought it here, I just didn't use it, is you can take a filter and put it on the bottom of your portafilter. And there are uh, little circle cutouts that you can find on Amazon, where you can take a V60 filter and cut out perfect little circles for this. All right, I'm gonna stop it at 150. So that was an 84 seconds. So it actually ran faster counterintuitively, counterintuitively, but we're gonna try it anyway. So I'm gonna stir that up. But yeah, you can clean up the cup even more if you do find that it's still a little dirty uh, because it is through a metal filter. Granted, take into account that the puck is acting as a, as a filtration itself. So that's gonna be holding some stuff back, but if you want it even cleaner, you can use a filter on the bottom of your puck. Copy on top. Just be careful if you, when you WDT to not rip the filter. All right, so I'm gonna take a sample with a clean pipette. All right, I'm gonna let that, whoops, made a little spill. All right, I'm gonna let that cool for a bit. Well, they're both very vibrant. Quite like, it's pretty nuts. This is something I highly recommend you trying. Um, I know there are some people who swear, who have sworn off manual brewing because of how easy this is, how quick it is, and how tasty it is. And again, you can do this on so many different machines. I was pulling them last night on my Bambino Plus. Granted, I wasn't doing it at full water debit uh, because I'm, I was trying to do the, the modern style where the flow rate should be around 1.5 to 4.5 milliliters a second. And again, that's linked in that Espresso Aficionado Discord uh, guide below what kind of the guidelines are for the Sprover itself. Of course, as I said, the original intention was just to use a stock machine that has nine bars, so it's probably running at a nine water debit or so. And so you can do it on just any stock machine. Granted, um, I, I did try a few of those with the Bambino before I was using the dimmer mod on it. Yes, I did put a dimmer mod on my Bambino Plus. Okay, it has an Ulca pump, you can do that. And so I was doing it with that um, uh, after I discovered I didn't like it as much with the full flow. Um, I was able to hit about 24 or so percent extractions using the Bambino Plus with the dimmer mod, which is a $5 modification, takes 20 minutes. All right, so let's try these as they're cooling. <laughs> so good. Well, this one's cooled a lot more, so I'm preferring this because this is still quite, quite hot. But uh, anyway, let's see where we're at. That's still a little hot. While we're waiting, I will show you here. This one equalized at about two milliliters a second. So it was a little faster of an output than the, than the first one. I'm curious if it's because that was my first grind with the coffee and maybe there's something stuck in it or maybe, I don't know. All right, so I just read the TDS on this and as expected from how much quicker that shot went, it actually went down just a little bit, um, but that's an easy fix, of course. You can 
go find her on the grind. So uh, I was a little shocked at how slow that first shot was. Um, again, that could have just been a grinder error. But regardless, you're getting the idea. If I go finer, I'm going to be able to get uh, a higher TDS, higher extraction. All good. Anyway, um, these are tasting great though. There's no need to chase numbers. That's a little. That's a different discussion for a different day. But the, sitting at 22, 23 percent right now is delicious. So I'm not really worried about those numbers as long as they're tasting really good. So uh, yeah. Try this out if you have the capability to dimmer mod your machine if you don't have the pre-infusion capabilities or just try it with full flow and dial it in similar to the Cafe Crema. Um, but yeah, check the links out below. See the, the articles that I'm referencing and, you know, have some fun. Get, get caffeinated like I am. I, and if, if, if you've noticed, I'm speaking a lot lower decibel today so that I don't break your eardrums. And that's been very hard for me. Um, so also, don't you love these cups? That is nuts. It's so good. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm probably going to drink both of these, but that's fine. All right. Um, uh, check out that Discord that I put below. If you have questions, there are people there who are happy to help. Comment below what you think about this. I know that it's going to make a lot of you kind of cringe when you see it running out like water um, because it's so different from what you expect. But just remember that nine bar espresso didn't come until about 50 years after the invention of espresso. So the original espresso machine was pulling about one and a half to two bars. So don't become dogmatic. Think outside of the box. Think about the fact that you can utilize different pieces of equipment for different methods and give it a shot. Pun intended, because I am a goober, a goofy goober from SpongeBob. So, um, yeah, try to, try to break outside your par the paradigms that you've, you know, worked under for so long. Give this a try. If you don't like it, you don't like it, you know? I think you might be surprised, especially if you're a fan of drip coffee or if you like Americanos. This could be a really neat endeavor to kind of dive down. And for people who have coffee shops, this is an, a, a great, fast way to give people drip coffee or, or like manual pourers or offer multiple coffees uh, if you just dedicate one group to this style of espresso or drip coffee. So thank you so much for watching. Check out my Patreon in the caption below. It's because of the support from these people that I'm able to get cool coffees from around the world, but also that fund these videos that allow me to um, increase production value, that allow me to get equipment for reviews, that allow me to do all these different things. Uh, stay tuned because I'll be doing a video on the Vario very soon um, that I'm very excited about. And uh, yeah, please hit that uh, like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Would love to, uh, to chat with you all. Thanks so much, very much. And actually, we're going to give a proper sign off to someone. Alex, come on the camera. Alex, is, camera. Alex has been on the camera crew and is about to move to New York and is going to be shooting coffee stuff. So if you're in New York, shameless plug, Alex, and, and follow his TikTok, uh, which yeah. will be in the caption below. Uh, but you can have a sip of that if you would like. And see, if it, he's not really a coffee drinker, but where I'm turning him slowly. Fantastic. He's lying, but it's it's great. Uh, yeah, give him a follow, and thank you so much, and uh, cheers. <laughs> it actually is good. I know.